I took a little break from filming over the last few days. In the meantime, I took some of the flakes that I made and did a few little things here. This is my attempt at a an eggy point. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Represents the Mississippian period in the south central US. Kind of the northeastern Texas, southwestern Arkansas area from about a thousand to seven hundred years ago. This is a little Snyder's kind of point, I guess, from my neck of the woods. And then just a small little teardrop by face. I also made another small point and turned them into this pair of earrings for my sister-in-law. I sent them to her in the mail as a way to say thanks for the obsidian. Awesome wedding present. Anyways, I won't bore you too much with the fine detail work. I won't film most of the pressure flaking needed to finish this thing. I just need to get it a little bit flatter up here and here, and then really establish the convexity on both faces. It's a little bit too flat, especially right here. It needs to have a nice lenticular cross section, so it's gotta be convex on both sides, both faces. Then I'll set up some flutes, remove them, and finish the point. I made myself a new pressure flaker that I really like. It's kind of like an ishi stick, I guess, with an antler tip. It works really well. To cut the antler tine off, I took a blade of Edwards chert that I made before, put some serrating retouch in there, and used it as a saw to cut a line all the way around the tine and then I just snapped it off.
Okay, I think I've got this pretty well set up now. Let's see how it goes. To stabilize it, I'm gonna wrap it lengthwise in this piece of leather. I'm gonna hold it really tight by the edges. I don't wanna have any extra force or pressure on the bottom. Hold it really tight by the edges. And then, I don't know if you can see, I'm holding the tip down to prevent any shock from traveling through the piece. I've got a real strong flute platform set up. I need to really swing for the fences on this one to try and get the big flute that I'm looking for. Yep, that happens. Way too much. Too strong of a platform. Too much of an inward, inward angle there. That is sad. That's a good example of what not to do. And a good example of what you'll see when you find a failed flute in the field, a lot of the time you'll just find this thing. Maybe someone will turn it into a fulsum point, much smaller one. I could still try and flute the back. And then try and turn this into something too. But I gotta say, that is pretty heartbreaking right there. Ouch. Well here we have it. The fruits of all my labors. I took some time off after breaking that Clovis. It's been about a week since it happened. I just kind of regrouped and thought about everything. I ended up doing this to kind of redeem myself. It's a different type of obsidian. It's a Mexican black obsidian from the Pachuca source. I made what I guess would be an agate basin point. It's kind of a paleo transitional point from about 10,000 years ago. Um, they're not fluting it anymore. This base is maybe a little more concave than it should be, but I'm pretty happy with it overall. Got to a decent thinness. It started out as the spall in the top middle of this giant pile of rock from James Abood, which I'll crack open in future videos. This is what it looked like after the initial round of reduction and making the edges regular. Here it is after some thinning and balancing out both faces, after the last pass of thinning flakes and making everything even. And here's the final product after the finishing round of pressure flaking. It got to about a 3 to 1 thickness, which fits into the range of archaeological examples. I showed you these ones. I made another little, small little biface. I think this is a good learning opportunity, so I'm going to keep this point as it is. Not bother re reworking the broken pieces. I kind of like this, because you can see exactly what went wrong here. First I set up this flute platform, the nipple, way too strongly. I really dove into the piece, gave it too much inward force, which caused it, the flute, to keep expanding. And eventually it just plunged down into the opposite face of this piece and split it right in half. You can see the flute wanted to keep traveling this way. One of the major reasons why that happened is I had made this point too flat at the base 
and they kind of rose up a little bit. It was thickest in the middle. It should have been equally thick here and here and thinner in the tip. So it was a bit too rounded, so as it crested the little hill here, it just wanted to dive down instead of come up. The other side, if I had fluted it first, would have been pretty much the same result. Maybe a little better, but it's still, still too thin at the base. I'll work on that for next time. So like I said, good learning opportunity. I'll post these videos anyways because I always learn a lot every time I break a piece. And this can go in a display case for my one of my first real big fluting attempts on a Clovis. I got a lot of nice bigger flakes that I can make things out of. This one I'm going to turn into a necklace and I'll post it on my Facebook and Etsy pages. I made this egg e point, posted that on Facebook. A couple of these smaller ones, maybe I'll turn into some more earrings. It's really nice material to work. The little sphere lights don't really get in the way of the quality that much. Flakes run really well. And it gives you a nice sharp edge like all that good obsidian does. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this went, and I hope you enjoy these videos. Have a good one.